Good evening. Welcome to VC3 News and Sports for Wednesday, September 25th, 2024. I am Shadeen McLean. Amidst the challenges faced in the tourism sector, the Ministry of Tourism has seen a 30% increase in stay over in the country within the first six months of this year. This is according to Minister of Tourism Carlos James addressing the tourism press conference today, which was held at the NIS conference room. Uh, what we are seeing is just over 11 to 12,000 more people coming to the destination within the first six months of the year in comparison to last year numbers. And it shows that there is some significant growth and the potential is there to even expand a bit more in our growth um, as a tourism destination. If you were to look at the comparative data pre-COVID, and I'm taking you back to 2019, which um, we consider our benchmark here, um, to track our recovery post-COVID uh, and now post viral we, we are up 20% um, in stay over arrivals for the first, month of the first six months of the year. And this is, a, this is in comparison to where we were before COVID. So we're up 20% above our COVID numbers, and we are up 30% above our numbers from last year's um, performance in terms of stillover arrivals for the first six months of the year. Minister James further noted that the total visitors' arrival number continue to rebound. Total visitor arrivals continue to rebound and reaching pre-pandemic levels. And this is supported by a surge in cruise visitors and an increase in stillover arrivals, as I indicated earlier. Last year, we recorded just under 400,000, 394,000 passengers, uh, just shy of our 2019 arrival numbers of 404,000. Um, while our cruise passengers num numbers last year surpassed our pre-COVID 2019 numbers, we recorded some 264,000 uh, plus passengers uh, last year via cruise passing the 255 plus thousand passenger numbers of 2019, which was our benchmark pre-COVID um, year in terms of performance and growth. So we are seeing an uptick in tourism, both in the cruise sector. We have seen a full recovery somewhat in our yachting, and we're also seeing an uptick, a significant uptick in our stay over arrivals up 30% year on year and up 20% in comparison to our pre-pandemic numbers. The tourism minister, however, noted that there has been a slight decrease in yachting in the country. We have seen, however, a slight drop in yachting um, by 1.7%. Um, and I do expect and anticipate a further decline um, due to the, some cancellations post burial. Uh, however, we do intend to ramp up our marketing and support to our partners within the yachting sector and of course, in a few weeks, we are hoping to dispatch a team to Martinique, where a lot of the charter companies are coming from. And very early after the devastation of, of Beryl, I got phone calls from the, the companies out of Martinique that there are cancellations. And persons were wondering you know, whether or not the, uh, how severely damaged and impacted the Grenadines were in particular, and St. Vincent um, generally. And... Our message is that St. Vincent and the Grenadines were open for business. The recovery has taken shape. Um, we are resilient people. The tourism sector is one that has proven to be resilient, in particular our yachting sector. And we want to spend a lot of time and resources there to uh, move in the direction of working with our stakeholders and our, and our partners within the yachting sector. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Tourism is expecting another record year of cruise calls to the destination. This is according to Minister of Tourism, Carlos James, noting that the ministry is expecting a total of 378 cruise calls to the country. Nine of which are inaugural calls and representing a projected visit arrival of 317,115 passengers by cruise within the 2024-2025 cruise season. The first call will be on Miro, and I'm really happy to see that we're, in some cases, we're seeing an increase by some 50% in calls to the Southern Grenadine, some of the islands. For instance, Canawan is now going into double digits. Miro, um, the first call will take place in October the 21st. 
The first call to Port Kingston is on Wednesday, November the 6th. Um, for those taxi operators who are more keen on, on seeing the larger ships to the, the destination. St. Vincent and the Grenadines will celebrate its 45th anniversary this year under the theme Togetherness, Prosperity and Perseverance. Addressing the Tourism Press Conference today, member of the Independence Committee, Eswald Roberts, said that this year there will be a month of activities in October to commemorate our 45th anniversary. On Tuesday the 1st, we'll have a flag raising ceremony at the cruise ship terminal um, on the lawn. And uh, then on Saturday the 5th, we have Miss SVG Pageant. Of course, Avia will be here to share some much details on that activity. On Sunday the 6th, there'll be a craft market at the Paradise Beach Hotel. On Wednesday the, on Wednesday the 9th, a big welcome event, of course, for the commencement of JetBlue flights to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. On Thursday the 10th, there'll be Vinci, a Vinci Heat soccer match at the Annisville playing field. Thursday the 10th, we'll, uh, on Thursday the 10th also, they'll have the commencement of a series of activities called Jam 45. This is an activity being organized by the Independence Committee, and the force will be held at the cruise ship terminal. This is basically an event where um, practitioners, cultural um, artists, and so forth will be showcasing their talent. It's basically live entertainment, and it would be a free, free event. On Friday the 11th, you have Pink Cap Walk and Rally. This is usually an annual, annual affair. It's on, the again, it's on the program again this year um, as they focus on the, the medical fraternity will focus on cancer awareness. Chairperson of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Beauty Shows Committee, Avia Charles, is encouraging Vincentians to purchase their tickets for the Miss SVG pageant, which is scheduled for October 5th at the Victoria Park. At the Tourism Conference Room today, Charles noted that the Miss SVG is in its final week of preparations for the upcoming show. We are currently making the final preparations in terms of finalizing training with our contestants and getting our production set up and team in full swing. Tickets uh, are currently $70 and that is our tier one ticket. After those tickets are done, we move on to tier two, which is $80, and tier three, $100. The difference between the tiers is just basically avail availability. So a few persons have also been asking, what am I getting for my tier one ticket or my tier two ticket? It's just availability. Once tier one tickets are done, that's it. We move on to $80 and then $100 for tier three tickets and we have limited tickets available in tier one now. Prime Minister Ralph Gonsalves speaks on several issues during the United Nations Summit of the Future. This and other stories coming up when we return after the break. Stay with us. Now available from all lotto agents, Goldmine, a new $2 Instacash game with a top prize of $3,000. Gold mine, so easy to play. If your numbers equals the bars of gold numbers in the same group, win the prize shown. You can win up to three times. Get your gold mine Insta Cash tickets where there's no waiting for a draw, and you can win on the spot. Gold mine, another easy to win Insta Cash game from the National no Office Authority. Authority. Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonsalves, stressed the need for immediate action against climate change. So a multilaterally led overhaul of the debt architecture is an imperative. And the truth be told, the developed countries have been making a lot of promises to us and breaking them cynically. My own country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have been recovering from the July the 1st ravages of Hurricane Beryl. And this again, as in other countries in the Caribbean and in other parts of the world, small island states, that we have to really take in the international community a much more ambitious action to address this climate crisis. Otherwise, all of us here 
we are going to go to hell in a handbasket. The United Nations Summit of the Future was a landmark global event aimed at addressing critical global challenges and shaping the future of multilateralism in an increasingly complex world. Their architecture in global governance for peace and security. This involves the reform of the Security Council. We have been talking about that for many, many years. And this has to be done efficaciously. And finally, I want to say that in this whole bundle of issues, we have to enhance digital cooperation in addressing some of the, the inequities and divisions that exist, and to apply science and technology in crafting opportunities for young people and the future generations. The summit brought together world leaders, policymakers, civil society, and international organizations to discuss and propose transformative solutions on issues like climate change, peace and security, digital transformation, poverty eradication, and global governance reforms. Within the context of the SDGs, I want to raise the issue, which I'll speak more to in my address later this week, to the General Assembly, the question of reparations for native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies. In reimagining our future in the multilateral system, we have to, really every one of us, resolve to work together better. Meanwhile, on the margins of the 79th season of the United Nations General Assembly in New York City, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Republic of Zambia formally established diplomatic relations on September 24, 2024. The historic agreement was signed by Honorable Frederick Stevenson, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade and Consumer Affairs of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Honorable Mulambo, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Zambia. The milestone marks the beginning of a new era of cooperation and collaboration between the two nations, highlighting their shared commitment to advancing mutual interests on the global stage. During the signing ceremony, both ministers emphasized the importance of fostering closer ties between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Zambia, recognizing the potential for strengthened cooperation in areas such as sustainable development, education, climate change resilience, trade and cultural exchange. The establishment of diplomatic relations between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Zambia reflects the two nations' shared vision of fostering peace, development and cooperation, as well as their commitment to multilateralism and working together in the spirit of the United Nations Charter. Those are our local stories. Coming up next, we have VC3 Sports. Now available from all lotto agents, Goldmine, a new $2 Instacash game with a top prize of $3,000. Goldmine, so easy to play. If your numbers equals the bars of gold numbers in the same group, win the prize shown. You can win up to three times. Get your Goldmine Instacash tickets where there's no waiting for a draw and you can win on the spot. Gold mine, another easy to win Insta Cash game from the National no Office Authority. Authority. Welcome to the VC3 Sports Update for today, Wednesday, September 25th. I'm Anthony Denny. In football, part one of the appetizer of the SG Community College Football Feast 2024 will be served off from this Friday, September 27th, when day one of the SVGCC Six-A-Side Knockout Football Challenge gets going at the Villa Campus Field. Just We Sports Science, the defending champions, headlines the 15 teams that registered for this year's Win or Go Home Challenge. The 2023 runners-up Volcanoes FC are also back in the hunt. Friday's opening day will see eight matches in their preliminary round and four quarterfinals being played from 11 a.m. At least 72 sports sciences students have successfully completed the SVG Football Federation CONCACAF D-Licensed Football Coaching course. Last Wednesday, September 18th, the second and third cohort of the SVGCC's Applied Associates degree in Sports Sciences program were presented with their SVG FF D-Licensed Football Coaching Certificates. 
The coaching course was incorporated into the skills and technique of Sports 1 football, one of the co courses offered in the three-year-old Applied Associates degree in Sports Sciences program. These and other similar courses are pursued during the two years program with a view of equipping the students on graduation with just not the associate's degree in sports science, but also with as many possible sports related certificates that can enhance their pursuits thereafter. On the field of play, Lopi and Reeves share the spoils in the finals of the 2024 St. Vincent Grammar School Interhouse football competition, leaving double defending champions Miller to settle for double second place. In the first matchup last Monday, September 23rd, in the junior category, saw Isaiah Jacobs and Mackay Boynes netting a goal apiece for Reeves to secure a 2-0 win over Miller. Then in the senior matchup, Zahim Michael and Sarani Roban of Lopi ran riot through Miller's defense. Their combined efforts saw five goals blasted past Miller's goalkeeper. Sarani Roban had a hat-trick of goals, three, while the top goal scorer of the competition, Zahim Michael, bagged a two, beating Miller five goals to nil. Miller thus placed second in both categories. Likewise, Crickhouse took both third places, while Lopi finished last in the junior division and Reeves was last in the seniors. In netball, it was another night of dominance for the Vinci Jewels as they recorded their third straight win in the 2024 ECCB OECS International Series at the Bosejo Indoor Facility in St. Lucia. The Vincentians beat Antiguan Barbuda 60-37 to keep their unbeaten run intact. It's going to be a throw in to Antigua. Antigua. The wing attack is going to take that one. She finds the center. Center plays it back to the wing. The goal defense. They find a goal attack. She finds goal shooter. Regis is going to try. She attempts and she scores. There is such a huge difference when the, the shooters actually just settle themselves to, to, to make the play. Oh, slip there from the goal shooter, unusual for St. Vincent. And Antigua stole that ball away. Antigua trying to bring that ball down to their shooting circle. Bad pass again from Antigua. St. Vincent intercepting and we're going to see... Offside called by the umpire Samuel. St. Vincent gets a penalty sure. shot. <coughs> there is a contact. Call. Lots of stuff happening in that shooting circle. Well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fedrick takes the penalty pass or shot. She scores. Antigua in possession of the center pass now. Will they be able to keep to hold on to that and convert? Intercepted by St. Vincent nicely. That was the wing attack, wing defense for St. Wing attack, yes. It's going to be a throw in for Antigua. She finds a center who plays it back to her. Goal attack will attempt the shot and, and she, she scores. scores. The center, of course, really trying to settle the game for Antigua. And you can, you can actually sometimes see the pause that she makes to give the, the shooters time to settle. Another change by Antigua and Barbuda. New goal defense has come in in the person of Ladu. Normally at Beautiful. the wing defense position, but this time she's wearing the goal defense, babe. It's going to be Antigua's center pass. She finds her wing defense, plays it to her goal attack. Not a very good pass, but intercepted by St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's going down the court. She crosses to center, who finds the goal shooter, and it's going to be a goal. Frederick makes good on this one. St. Vincent gets the center, finds the goal attack. She will, of course, be looking for Frederick in that goal circle, who will convert. Oh, she misses. Unusual. Antigua, center. Antigua in possession, bringing the ball down court. Wing attack for Antigua. Finds a goal attack. Goal attack. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pass beautiful into pass. that goal shooter. A little pass. And she yes. scores. Beautiful play there on Antigua. Center. Antigua. She finds 
It's an it untouched center untouched pass. Center pass. Nobody touched that center, that ball as it was leaving the center and going over the third. So that's an untouched center, a free pass given to St. Vincent. St. Vincent will look to bring that ball down court. Those short Beautiful passes work that there by the yes. goal attack, she gets herself all and the way into the circle. The in. This defense but unfortunately misses that goal. And it is the, it end, is the end of, of the, game. the game. That quarter went by really quickly. Uh, <laughs> it is the end of the score game. Unofficially, 68-37. You have been watching Antigua and Barbuda versus St. Vincent and the Grenadines right here at the Beau <coughs> in the facility in Grosily, St. Lucia. Tonight, the Vinci Jews will meet uh, host and 2023 champion St. Lucia from 8 p.m. We wish the last all the best. And on that note, this is where we wrap the VC3 Sports Update. Thank you very much for viewing. I'm Anthony Denny. <laughs>